New Matter Mod T 3D Printer. If you don't know what that is, here it is. But you can't have one, because the company that makes it doesn't exist anymore. Well, I mean, unless you buy it second hand or something, or just find one on the side of the street. Anyways, I've had this one since November 2016, and it introduced me to the world of 3D printing. So the main reason I'm making this video is because while there are a lot of great Mod T reviews out there already, a lot of them miss out on some key features of the printer, or they're just plain wrong. Heck, the official Robo 3D page still says you have to use the 2015 version of Cura. So I understand the confusion, but it's possible to just use the Mod T and get some great quality prints out of it. I think too some of the confusion is because most of the videos out there are just first impressions and so the people don't have enough time to play around with the settings and notice everything and tweak everything to be perfect. I've been through my fair share of heartache and painful trial and error with this machine and its settings, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so really quick, before we get into the other stuff, let's see how this beautiful box came into existence. Go back to 2014 and a company called New Matter just opened up shop. They had just ended a hugely successful Indiegogo campaign and they were launching the world's cheapest, simplest 3D printer. It was going to be in the living room of every home in America. Or so they thought. They also had a number of other products available on their website such as a 3D scanner and this 3D printing pen. Then all of a sudden in February 2018, users of the website were greeted with this. And then eventually this as well as this FAQ that you can now read. There was a bit in there worth mentioning. If you need any service or repairs or anything, then these are the guys to go to. Also, they have Mod T Hot End available for 25 bucks. Though when I first got my 3D printer, I did probably what everybody else did. I used the interface provided by New Matter available on their website. It was convenient and I didn't really know what I was doing, so a base profile was nice to start. But after my third or fourth print, I started wandering through the website and came across a desktop app. And that desktop app let me print files in G-code. And that introduced me to Cura. Okay, so I'm about to show you the settings you need if you want your Mod T to work with Cura 3.4.1. But first, here's some bonus tips and tricks. So, you can actually push the machine beyond its limits, and if you're careful enough, you can get a couple extra millimeters here and there. Also, if you want good quality prints, I highly recommend this print bed clip. It prevents the print bed from shifting slightly during the printing. Also, if you're printing something that has a lot of overhangs, then I highly suggest this fan shroud. However, use it at your own risk, because whenever I use it, I notice the fan makes a funny noise every minute or so. Never use Optimize. Ever. Here's the Mod T actual specifications. It's interesting to note that on their website now, it says the max speed is 150 millimeters per second. I would never go that fast without a lot of bed shifting. I like to stick around the 40 to 60 range, usually opting to print at 50. So layer resolution. Apparently, you can go as low as 50 microns. And I've tried this and it works. Here's a print. Okay guys, so the actual reason you're watching this video, the settings for Cura. So here's the G-code for the start and the end. The G-code flavor should always be on Marlin. Anything else results in catastrophic failure. So as I just said earlier, you can cheat a little bit with your max dimensions. Uh, here are the numbers that I use. Uh, max machine width with the X would be 155, in the Y is 104, and in the Z it's 130. Now these next settings are crucial to getting the best quality print out of your Mod-T printer. The print temperature should be set to 220 degrees Celsius. And your speed, if you want a 0% chance of bed hopping, I suggest you go with 40 millimeters per second, although you can use 60 and 50 just fine, but I would never go above 60. And also, don't forget, never use the optimized button. So I've officially had this unit for one year and eight months at the time of making this video. And in that time, I've created a lot of different prints. And they range from little figures, to some tools that I tried, to some toys that I gave out for Christmas. In fact, I remember one night, I was at my mom's place, uh, and when I had first gotten the 3D printer, one of the plastic pipes in our basement actually broke. And there was water flowing out onto the ground. So sure enough, instead of calling a plumber, 
I went down to my computer, I sat down, and I modeled a quick little cylinder with tapered ends to make sure it would fit the pipe, and about 20 minutes later, the leak was fixed with a 3D printed little piece. Then the plumber came the next day and he actually fixed everything. That's probably still my best 3D printing story. So, absolutely love the quality that I got from the printer for the price of it at the time that I got it. I feel that it was underappreciated for what it was. There's definitely some better 3D printers out there now. Now, the reason I say this is because, don't forget about this, the Z-axis on the Mod T is actually able to go as low as 50 microns, whereas the high quality setting on the New Matter website only used 100 microns. However, ever since I started using Kira 3.4.1, I've gotten increasingly higher quality models, as well as far fewer failed prints. Once you get the right settings and a couple of mods that you want for this printer, you can create some models that you wouldn't believe are possible for such a low cost unit. All in all, I would say this has been a very helpful intro 3D printer that made learning the ropes a little easier. It's not perfect though. It is a lot slower than most other printers, routinely going over Kira estimates by a significant amount. So I love the Mod T for the experiences it gave me, but going back, if I were to make the purchase again, I probably wouldn't get the Mod T. Alright. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, give it a thumbs up and a like and all of that jazz and stuff. Hey look, the 3D print is done. Almost perfect. One shifting error. I guess I gotta set the speed lower.